I, as the person representing academia, I am coming to this project that I'm going to describe in a few seconds. And I have said at the very beginning, I am here because I am interested in understanding the relationship between immigration and health. We don't have any data, and the community folks said, well, you know, we need to do an assessment in the four communities that we serve. The Chicago Department of Public Health, they said, well, we have no idea what's going on in the community, so we need to do that. And the community organized it and said, well, you know, we would like to know what, what is going on in our communities to do advocacy, to you know, promote uh, policy changes and, and so on. So that is the that is the idea. And for me, what has been bothering me and literally bothering me because I'm an immigrant myself, is that <clears throat> for the most part immigrants come to the United States very young, very healthy. They are for the most part employed. And they with you know all of these conditions you are expected to have a health status that will point up and up. When, and it actually happens for the first five to ten years. And then things begin to, to look a little bit on the negative side. So the question is, um, what happens in, in the process? Any ideas? Just, uh, social stress of people training them as immigrants? That is a very good possibility. And in fact, our colleague back there uh, is one of the researchers working in this project. Um, I can tell you a few ideas that we have been um, uh, exploring, right? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> Social stress. Material conditions, of course, um, they are here. For the most part, they are earning very low wages. But the social status is something that may be coming in to help us understand uh, some of that process. Uh, so, you may be earning less wages, but there are folks in the United States that are earning less wages too, right? But immigrants tend to do worse than them. And so then the question is, you know, how is that possible? And then the social status begin to, um, begin to get them. So what we don't know about immigrants is, is it the place where they have come from? Is it the community where they live? Um, is it the work conditions they Engage in that we don't we don't know that an answer to that question, and since we don't know or we don't have an answer to that question, we have decided to call it the healthy immigrant paradox, and that is literally the title of many articles in public health. <clears throat> I want to address the paradox and see if there are things that we could actually do um, to understand the process that is involved and to understand why immigrants uh, get to the point um, where they are. So we developed what we have been calling the Community Health Assets and Need Assessment. And this is um, a way of combining ideas about the social determinants of health. We have modeled the project that's a community-based participatory research project. And here at the poll, and we have involved, or I have involved, about 97 students in, in the project. So they have become a community-based uh, service learning model as well. So I'll show you a few pictures of the um, colleagues. Yours is not there, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, working there. So the partners that I have been working with, it's Alivio Medical Center. It's located in Pilsen. And they have two clinics, one in Pilsen and one in a uh, little village. They serve about 97,000 patients every, every year. Um, one of the community organizations is the uh, Chinese American uh, Service League, or CASEL. Uh, that is just an example of the organization that we are working with. Community residents, schools, and you know, folks like that have been uh, joining us. Uh, the Chicago Department of Public Health uh, have been writing with us as well. And of course, the, um, we represent in, uh, uh, the university. The overall goal, in order to get all of our interest in one pot, so to speak, we have um, said what well, we are going to assess the assets and the needs of the residents in four Chicago communities, Archer Heights, Armour Square, Bridgeport, and Gage Park. And Curry, you're working in? With uh, Archer Heights. In Archer Heights. Does anybody know where those communities are? You do? Well, I work in Archer Heights. <laughs> so, um, they're on the south side, or 
absolutely. So this long community there, uh, that is. Um, you attention. Sure. This is a quiz. This is a quiz. This a, that is um, um, Armour Square. Uh, Bridgeport is right next to it. Uh, this is Sancho Heights. I'm sorry. This is Sancho Heights. Uh, this is Cage Park. So if you have uh, taken a flight out of Midway, you could have been in those communities uh, before the airport is around here. So that is, those are the places where we have been working. And I'm sorry, Michelle, I completely forgot that you have been involved in this too. Um, just uh, to give you an idea <coughs> who did in those communities, it's a, you see those numbers? Yeah? It's a very, very diverse community. Um, we have been working with instruments that we have translated into Chinese, um, Polish, and Spanish, and, and of course we uh, use English as well. Um, but you can see that concentration of Asian Americans in Armour Square is much higher, concentration of Mexicanos in Beach Park, and uh, Archer Heights, we still see a uh, large number of Polish Americans uh, living in those communities. And then we see huge differences among multi communities. Bridgeport is a heavily gentrified uh, community, uh, very few social organizations, and that is also true for Archer Heights. That's one of the problems that we have been facing uh, lately. And um, well, if the idea about social determinants of health may work, this is a perfect laboratory, you know, worth studying um, that idea at the community level. <clears throat> Something else that we have noticed, and this is of course you know, my, the, my area of interest, is the large increase in population, that most of the population that are moving into those communities are immigrants. Um, most of them are from South Asia, from China. Um, there are still a few from uh, Lithuania and Poland, as well as Mexicanos, which is the largest uh, percent. So down to specific bolts, <clears throat> and you'll see social stuff a lot. I'm a sociologist, I cannot help it, I'm sorry. Um, community training changes, gentrification, what I just told you, that is an important component that we are measuring. Um, Self-reported health conditions, up until this moment, we have only been dealing with self-reported data. Um, that is going to change, and let me tell you later uh, about that. And we also want to look at the communities, the physical as well as the social shape of the community. What would be an example of a social component in the communities? That is the income distribution. That is one, one aspect. What would be something that can tell us about the social relationship in those communities? How people relate to each other? <laughs> well, if they have like a community area or... Yes. Yeah. Social spaces. Yeah. Gathering activities. Uh, those are you know, factors that you may say, well, you know, yeah, I can see that it can use. What is the relationship with that? I'm pretty able to hear. Huge. Okay. Would that make sense? Okay. Obesity. Depression. It's also related to uh, gang activity. Um, and that is you know, the expectation. We have used, um, for those of you in research methods, I mean, if you have taken research methods, and um, remember that painful experience, I presume, um, we have used qualitative methodologies, um, interviews, uh, ethnographic work, and I think Michelle, you were involved in that uh, component as well. And we have used uh, surveys and the structure observations um, when we do the community mapping, and that I'm going to talk in a second. Um, here are the, some of the colleagues that have been involved, that if you have seen them on campus, you can tell them that you saw a picture of them. The first stage, um, we did a literature review, a data review, you know, that's uh, you know, what a study you would do, but we also went down to the communities to walk around, uh, to point to um, organizations and ask a few questions, you know, what they do and so on, so that we could begin to understand the shape of the